Hi guys, it's ASPYT and this is the maxed out brand new 16 inch MacBook Pro. I've been using it over the last few days, so it's time for my first impressions review. So in this video, I'm gonna show you what happened in the quick unboxing, and then I'm gonna go through all of the new features, compare it to my 15 inch MacBook Pro, and more importantly, go over with you my opinion on if you are looking at possibly buying the new MacBook Pro and could, whether you should part with your hard earned cash or save it for a possible second generation or something completely different. And of course, who is the brand new MacBook Pro actually for? So without further ado, let's get straight to it. Now, before we continue, a quick word from our video sponsor, which is of course, Dot Tech Domains. Now, when you're building your own website, whether it's for yourself or your business and brand, one of the hardest things to do is to actually find a domain name that really reflects your brand, stands out, is unique, and let's be honest, looks pretty cool. And if your website is similar to mine and is about tech, then this might be perfect for you. I snagged the domain name asbyt.tech, which of course goes seamlessly with what I do. And you can of course do exactly the same just with your brand name at the start. And the reason why I'm bringing this to you today is because dot tech domains are actually having a Black Friday sale where you can get up to 90% off domain names. Join the likes of Viacom, Intel and CES and get your very own dot tech at a whopping 90% off on either one, five or 10 year domains using the link go.tech forward slash ASBYT. Find your domain and use the code BFCM19 to secure it before it goes. Right, so back to the juicy bit of today's video. Very quickly, let's touch on what we have here. With an upgraded 2.4 gigahertz, eight core, ninth generation Intel Core i9 processor, turbo boost up to five gigahertz. I've also maxed out the RAM to 64 gigabytes, as well as upgrading the graphics to the AMD Radeon Pro 5500M, and I've upgraded the SSD to two terabytes. I've not maxed it right out to eight because quite frankly, I don't need that much, but I thought I would upgrade the rest. I plan to use this MacBook Pro for a lot of different heavy duty tasks. So let's pump it up. If you wanna save a couple of hundred quid on that, I'd personally focus more on upgrading the RAM and graphics than the actual processor. So before we touch on all the new features and how they've affected everyday use for me, let's look at what's the same. So we've got the same two color options, space gray and silver with the same metallic Apple logo. A matte black option would be nice, but I'm pretty sure every tech head says that about everything and still companies tend to struggle to produce. We've got a headphone jack and the same four type C ports. So it's still dongle city. Now many people slate Apple for doing things a bit differently or a little bit early before the rest of the market is kind of actually ready for those changes to be worthwhile the disappearance of the headphone jack, for example, but the market does tend to catch up. The sale of wireless headphones and earphones is now a huge market, but I can safely say with this, Apple got it wrong. What are we now, three, nearly four years on from that first decision, and people are still faffing around with dongles for SD cards and HDMI cables, for example. It's not a deal breaker for me, but in an effort to simplify, they've actually made it more complicated, more frustrating, and it's just one more thing you have to worry about, especially when traveling. We've also still got the same gigantic trackpad, which is, as ever, excellent. Responsive, customizable, and the haptic feedback is just on point. With its pressure-sensitive drawing and multi-touch gestures, it is again brilliant for the creative-minded. So onto what's new. Well, of course, the first place to start is that brand new 16-inch display. It is an IPS panel with a native resolution of 3072 by 1920 and 226 pixels per inch. And you've got 500 nits peak brightness. So it's not as bright as some of the latest flagship smartphones, which are up near the thousands and over, but for laptop displays, it does a good job. It's just if it's really bright outside, you may struggle a little bit. And even though, as stated, it is an IPS panel, in terms of image contrast, you can get some incredible deep blacks and really bright whites. We won't get bogged down with the precise photo alignment of liquid crystal molecules, which is what Apple refer to it as, but all you need to know is this display is pretty excellent for those of you out there looking for a laptop for photo, photo, photo and video all in one, photo editing. <laughs> Images and videos are super true to life due to its P3 wide color gamut, 
and I've been editing my recent YouTube videos on it and it's been great to have that accuracy. Talking of editing, the render and export times have been pretty good as well. Not night and day from the older 2017 15 inch which I've got here, but it certainly is a little bit noticeable. The combination of larger impellers, new fan blades and a slightly thicker chassis as well as the brand new AMD Radeon Pro graphics have meant creating content on this MacBook Pro has been much easier. Now, of course, many of you may argue that a more powerful Windows laptop or PC might be better for video editing, etc. But for me, it's Mac OS and more importantly, it's Final Cut Pro. I just simply can't get enough of it. And I know people talk about the ecosystem or the walled gardens of Apple being a negative, but even though I use Android smartphones a lot, possibly more than the iPhone, I also do have that iPhone and often I transfer photos and videos. So features like AirDrop, etc., are a godsend. You can also, if you want, connect a second screen using the iPad Pro, for example, completely wirelessly for a seamless second space with pretty much no lag whatsoever. So again, this is another reason why people like that Apple experience. While we're on performance, here are some of the benchmarks for your viewing pleasure if you want the hardcore numbers. Now the speakers on the brand new 16 inch MacBook Pro are also excellent as well. We've got a new six speaker system with force cancelling woofers with support for Dolby Atmos. So video editing, watching movies or gaming is great if you decide that headphones aren't for you. But if you're in public, please, please pop the headphones on. Don't be that guy. Now I've mentioned editing content on the MacBook Pro, but now actually creating content is better than ever thanks to its better audio capture. There's now a three mic array with high signal to noise ratio and directional beam forming, meaning the audio that gets picked up sounds far more professional. Don't get me wrong, it's not a direct replacement for a high quality dedicated mic, but it is good for little bits of capture when a pro mic isn't available you can kind of get away with it is passable or more passable than it ever was before. Unfortunately, on the downside, the 720p front facing webcam is still ridiculously atrocious for the time that we're in. We're in the end of 2019, 2020, and to still only have a 720p camera at the front is, is mind blowingly bad, in my opinion. For a laptop that costs between three and four grand, I just don't know why they've upgraded the mic and not the camera have them both and you could really have a little studio setup just with your laptop. Of course, it does a reasonable job for things like Skype calls, etc. but using it in exchange for my DSLR for talking head capture, absolutely not. Now we have a larger battery with this edition as well and I can confirm Apple's claim of 11 hours of web browsing is more or less pretty accurate. When video editing or taking part in other high intensive tasks, it does die a lot faster, but not quite as bad again as my old 15 inch. So it's not as bad as my old one, but it certainly doesn't fill me with confidence to leave the house and not take my charger with me if I've got a lot of work to do. Now the keyboard. Oh, the keyboard. After 19 generations of the famed butterfly keys, we finally have a keyboard which works how it should for a laptop that costs this much money. Apple have said it's a redesigned scissor mechanism Others have said it's a complete revert to a pre-butterfly keyboard, but in reality, it's somewhere in between. It's definitely more mushy with one millimeter travel from the clacky, abrasive, down reluctant keys of last generation, meaning typing is a much more comfortable experience as a whole. And they're also a lot quieter as a result. So yes, they feel more mushy than last generation, but they certainly feel more sturdy as well than many keyboards available to buy right now. They really have after quite a good few years of, of really, really poor keyboards, they've done a very good job with this one so far. It might completely prove me wrong and break in about two weeks time. Full review to come on that one, I'll let you know. And again, just to prove I'm not completely slating Apple on the last keyboard, I've been using mine for about two years. And while every now and again, I do get stuff that goes under the keys and it does limit the travel and sometimes the functionality of the keys, I've blown air on it and it's gone away. So yes, it isn't perfect by any means, but I haven't had quite the problems that other people have mentioned. Now, people are also raving about the return of the physical escape key. Not something that really bothers me either way, nor does the separation of the fingerprint scanner from the rest of the touch bar, which I am, as I was when it first came out, not a fan of. It just doesn't really help me out with anything I do on the MacBook Pro whatsoever. But there are some of you that have found it helpful and will find this helpful. 
the beauty of Opinion. So you could say the keyboard doesn't quite look as eye-pleasing as before, but it's much more functional, something that Apple's decision-making on approach to design in recent years has been indifferent in. Certainly for those of you who need a MacBook Pro for typing out lots of documents or Excel spreadsheets, etc., these are all a much welcome change. Apple have always been accused of being stubborn to the point of creating products that are subsequently worse as a result. But this year, with this keyboard, they've done the complete opposite. And it's a welcome decision. And while they may not have said, hey, we've made a mistake, here's the fix, they've proved they've listened, they've altered, and it's great to see. Oh, and hey, this MacBook Pro has the Apple T2 security chip, and who doesn't like a bit of Terminator 2 action? So all in all, as always with Apple products, expensive, but I think this year, I feel there's much more justification for that high price tag, which really hasn't been there over the last three or four years with their range of MacBooks and MacBook Pros. So if you've been eagerly waiting and watching and listening over the last few years, reluctant to pull that trigger due to all the problems, yes, you could possibly wait for a second generation 16 inch MacBook Pro, in case there are a couple of little issues, but I'm more certain than ever, it might be time for you to pull that trigger if you're looking to buy a MacBook Pro. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Are you an Apple fan? Are you a MacBook Pro fan? Do you just need a new laptop and want to know whether to go Mac OS? Or... I don't know. And that's not even Siri. That's Google Voice Assistant. Why don't you, Pixel's getting jealous. Why don't you calm down, all right? Just because I've been talking about Apple, eh? I don't even know where I've gone. What, what was it? Oh, was I, ending? I was ending the video, wasn't I? Yeah. Like and share if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Subscribe and hit the notification bell if you're new to the channel and love unboxings, news, and of course, reviews. I love you and leave you. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.